Good morning, and welcome to another edition of WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Kitchen Studios. I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin, the research development chef here at Modernist Pantry. Now look, if you're producing a Netflix original series, grit is amazing and you want it in there. If you're producing an amazing frozen treat, Grit is terrible and will ruin the entire experience, and today we are surprisingly not talking about Netflix, are we? No, we're not talking about Netflix. We're actually talking about that grittiness that you get when you make your own homemade ice cream. And some people think, is it undissolved sugar? Right. Uh, it actually is the ice crystals that are forming when you're making it. And there's a lot of things that go into making an ice cream, whether it be a gelato, American ice cream, European style ice cream, or sorbet. So. Those ice crystals are what you're going to feel on your on your mouth or on your tongue, and they're kind of unpleasant because you don't get yeah. that when you have a you know normally commercially produced or well produced ice cream. Right. Yeah. If you're a if you're a professional chef adding something amazing to your dessert menu, you shouldn't be outdone by Jerry and Ben in Vermont. Did we get around it enough there for trademark reasons? I have no idea who you're talking about. But okay. Yeah. Neither do I. Outstanding. So um, yeah. So. All frozen goods are going to have those ice crystals in there. Well, you're talking about trying to make ice cream, gelato, sorbet. Uh, it's all going to have that ice crystals in there. The trick is what can we do to keep those ice crystals from clumping up or forming larger? Um, and that's where it's a combination of technique and some hacks we'll get into. Yeah, so, so technique is definitely the first thing you want to get because uh, <clears throat> if you get that down, you're able to understand exactly how to make a good ice cream. But when you finally understand all of it, then we can work in the hacks and we can really make a, an amazing ice cream. So the first thing you want to know is whether you're using a compressor based ice cream maker like this Breville here, or you're using a, you know, a stand mixer with a frozen drum on it, uh, that you want to get that as cold as possible, as fast as possible. So if you're making, let's say, American based, um, you know, milk, sugar flavorings or you're doing a custard base which is a european style yeah. uh, which is eggs cream milk and flavorings um, sorbet and gelato we can get into in a minute you want to take those usually you heat them get them as cold as possible just toss them in the refrigerator uh, for a few hours or until it reaches the internal temperature of that yeah. refrigerator before you put it into your ice cream maker now, when you put it into your ice cream maker, you don't want to take it all the way until it's that hard pack ice cream. Because if you take it all the way there, it's taking a long time to get cold in here during the churning process. It can sometimes overturn and make the, yeah. the fats that are in the cream kind of turn into butter a little bit. So you want to get it to the consistency of, say, a soft serve ice cream. Okay. Before you take it out and then you put it into a... If you have a blast chiller, put it into a blast chiller because it's going to get it as cold as possible, as fast as possible, or put it into your refrigerator freezer. Uh, those are usually around zero degrees. And we can talk a little bit more about uh, scoopability when we talk about the um, refrigerator freezer. Right. Usually people ask, and we're obviously going to talk about our ingredients in a few minutes, and some people think that they're for scoopability, but really it's that temperature that we're looking for. You want about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, most uh, home freezers, while they do have a dial, it says one through five, and we don't right. necessarily know what that means. <laughs> uh, you want, obviously, get to the 15 degrees Fahrenheit, but those freezers run at about zero, which is going to make a hard ice cream like this sorbet here if you want to try and scoop into that, Mark. Yeah, so this is really fun. Uh, you can see it's already got a scar from when we tried this earlier. Um, a few things. One, I mean, you can see the crystallization on here, too, but, um, you know, if we try to push... Actually, it's, it's... It's a little softer now, but still, if you get it in there, you can usually lift it up, which is not something that you want. You want to be able to pull it right out into yeah. a beautiful uh, scoop. So we can see here, this is just out of the ice cream maker itself. And you don't have those ice crystals that are forming on top there, yeah. but you have a nice, beautiful sorbet here. And at this point is when we're going to put it in the freezer. So doubling back, even if you have some of the best equipment available for making it uh, without going, uh, you know, giant scale, uh, even at the giant scale of commercial production, they use a few tips uh, or rather a few ingredient hacks to get that creamy texture that's kind of spoiled your and your guests mm -hmm. palate for ice cream. Um, so even if you're looking at, you know, somebody who has access to the large industrial ice cream makers, they're still relying on ice cream stabilizers. Yeah. And even those large industrial ice cream makers have the ability to overturn and do things that we do at home. Yeah. Uh, but the stabilizers are what's going to help you make them at home with a, a smaller ice cream maker, they're going to single batch ice cream maker, yeah. but it's going to provide the creaminess and the texture that you usually get with those mass produced ice creams. So we have the 
perfect ice cream here, which will just mix right into your sugar. All of these here should mix right into the sugar in your current recipe. Mix them in. Um, Perfect ice cream, very easy to use. You yeah. just mix it into your cream and milk. Usually when you scald it before you make your custard, if you're doing an American style, I would bring that milk up to a scald right before a simmer, right before a boil, and then you can mix it in, uh, make your normal American-based ice cream, which sure. is good because no, American style ice cream is notorious for having large shards of, of ice crystals in there. and It's not as yeah. pleasant as a European style. Gelato has a lower fat content and a more dense texture. Our proprietary blend here has a little bit of locust bean gum, which helps with that dense texture, that helps yeah. with that creaminess, especially when you have a lower fat content. It's really amazing in there. And the perfect sorbet, I really like because you're adding it to something that's usually fresh. Right here, we have strawberry sorbet. We don't want to heat those strawberries and kind of change the flavors of them and mute the flavors. Yeah. We want a bright, vibrant kind of strawberry flavor, right? Right, right. So this one's easy. You can just pour it into your sugar mix it in a blender, and then churn it immediately. And that's what I did with this. I made it in about an hour this morning from start to finish. Now that's clutch, because a lot of people do call in or email or write on social media or whatever, and, and I, one of the common questions we get is, you know, what's the best stable, right? or what's the best gum for ice cream? What's the best gum for gelato? And, and the truth is, there's no single best for any case. They all impart certain uh, benefits to, to, to the recipe at hand, and that's why we've gone ahead and developed perfect ice cream, perfect gelato, and perfect sorbet, uh, so that you can get that perfect ice cream, perfect gelato, and perfect sorbet. Uh, brief break for a second. You can find all of these at www.modernistpantry.com. Uh, just go on over there, start typing in perfect uh, in the search bar right up at the top, and not of this video, uh, right up at the top, and you'll quickly find our perfect uh, for whatever you're using. And it's probably key to point out um, that these are very different gum sets between them. So they're, each one of them is purpose built yes. um, for the job at hand. That means you'll get the best quality results, but it also means you're probably not going to want to use, say, perfect sorbet in your ice cream or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, ice cream has a slightly lighter, more airy texture, and that's what this one is built for. It's built to give that nice, light, airy texture to an ice cream. The gelato is there for that density that you want and that creaminess, that richness that you get. And perfect sorbet is, um, well, sorbet is mainly sugar, yeah. water, and fruit, which are all water-based. And then you're going to get huge ice crystals in that. And this makes just a nice smooth texture without having to heat it. So they're all geared exactly towards what they eat. Yeah. So if you're looking for the quick, easy way to figure out which one you need, pretty much pick the one you're going for. Um, if you're doing a dairy-free recipe, um, uh, give us a contact. But if you're doing dairy-free, you could probably do... Yeah. Oh, sorry, for I would doing dairy-free ice cream, I should Dairy-free ice cream, yeah. Sentence. So no matter what you're trying to do with dairy-free ice cream, usually there's more water content to it. So yeah. it depends on whether or not you want to heat it. Um, you could go with the perfect sorbet for dairy-free ice cream easily if, yeah. you're not, if you don't want to heat it, if you were making it, say, out of almond milk. Sure. Because sometimes heating almond milk will have grittiness to it. Right. So <laughs> if you're using soy or something like that, maybe you want to go with a gelato. Really, they work for everything, but... If there's more water content, go with something like the Perfect Sorbet. Now that temper, I mean, sorry, that's that stabilizer is going to help um, with both the creation of it, but also kind of help protect the ice cream a little bit mm -hmm. um, from from you know the temperature transfers going from freezer to freezer or or, or whatever. But you're still not going to want to let it obviously thawed down all the way. No, and, it, and all that. it doesn't work like that. The churning process is really the technique that makes the ice cream. These are just helpers. These are just, you know, a helping hand to make you have the best ice cream possible. So if you're going to take it out, if I were to leave that uh, tub of uh, strawberry sorbet out, yeah. completely thaw it, and then put it in the freezer, I would have granita at the end, which is just right. uh, shaved ice. Yeah, so. uh, and, and and for record here, uh, you may see it kind of melting. It's it's about uh, 75, almost 80 degrees in the studio mm -hmm. today, so our ice cream is kind of falling apart at the seams here, but um, that's probably important. We already talked about um, scooping and scooping temperature um, and, and why that's important. So uh, also, you'll want to know maybe uh, you want to limit bringing it down to that temperature and refreezing it. Yeah, so there's a few things you can do. If you're having a dinner party and you made your own ice cream earlier in the day, obviously keep it in the freezer until about an hour beforehand. If you're putting out the entrees, take out the, uh, the perfect sorbet and either put it in the refrigerator or put it on the counter sure. and then it'll be perfectly scoopable. That's the best way to take it and be able to do it at home. So if you're looking for the secret to a perfect frozen treat, 
perfect frozen treat, <laughs> insert name here, um, whether that's the frozen ice cream or whatever. Now, it's also going to comp be complemented by having the right equipment for the job. Mm -hmm. uh, we happen to love this Breville compressor ice cream maker because it, it you can uh, do this with anything, but it, it helps get it as cold as it possibly can while continuing that churn. This particular model is a really, really powerful motor, which also helps in lots of yep. great settings. So yeah, this one's an absolute go-to, but you can do it with just the frozen bowl. The trick you run into for that is you're freezing slower. Yeah, so so what this does is this has a compressor which you can pre-cool and it cools a lot lower than let's say zero degrees. It yeah. can get down to negative 10, negative 15, which is really nice. Obviously, if you uh, happen to have a stand mixer and you happen to also have a doer of liquid, uh, liquid nitrogen, nitrogen yeah. you could pour it in there and pour a little bit in and you'd have ice cream in about 10 minutes. But we don't all have that luxury. Yeah. So obviously a compressor is the best if you have you know, a couple batches of ice cream that you want to make either in a restaurant or at home because you're an ice cream enthusiast, who isn't? Um, this is nice because you can take it out, clean it, and make another batch immediately, whereas another, you know, stand mixer or a drum one that goes onto a, uh, a stand mixer, you will have to cool it, make your ice cream, clean it, freeze it solid again, and then go again. So there's a lot more time uh, involved in those. Now, we promised you to the secret to professional, delicious, smooth, creamy ice cream. And part of that secret is having the right equipment for the job. And a lot of that is also having that secret ingredient that professional chefs at the, the large industrial scale often rely on. Now they don't, with these uh, ice cream stabilizers, um, whether it's the perfect ice cream, perfect gelato, or perfect sorbet. Right. Yes. Absolutely. So, is there anything else that we kind of so we got into we, we we got into scoopability, getting your getting your uh, your frozen treat down to the right temperature. That makes it the most scoopable and the most creamy. Refrigerator if it's going to be a while out in the open if it's going to be uh, nearly immediate. Uh, we got into the right technique and tools to help prevent these ice crystals from forming larger ice crystals in the first place. That's going to be your churn, keep that constant churn, get it as cold as possible while working it, and then really, 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 really fast, trying to get it frozen as quickly as possible. If you've got a blast chiller, amazing. If you've got liquid nitrogen, call us. We also want to play with it, but also uh, amazing. Um, but if you're working with just pretty standard equipment, um, you're going to be probably the highest risk of all of the groups because even with the perfect recipe, uh, without that speed and the way to get the stuff as cold as possible while continuing that churn, you're at the highest risk for those larger ice crystals that are even more noticeable. Yes. And one, one last thing I want to test or touch on is uh, when people go out and they get ice cream from an ice cream shop, those ice creams are scoopable. So some people will then think that these are what make them. Right. They have very special freezers that freeze to an exact temperature specifically for ice cream. So that's just one thing I wanted to make sure people understood because yeah. uh, these are great ingredients and they make really amazing, if not perfect ice cream, but it's also up to making sure that temperature is right. All right, outstanding. So get started making your own delicious frozen treats. There's still time left in the season. And frankly, I will never believe anybody who says a frozen treat isn't still great in winter. So head over to www.modernistpantry.com. Pick up the right perfect for what you're putting on your menu, uh, whether it's a once in an occasion addition to your desserts, or if it's just going to be part of your new repertoire. Uh, and whatever you're making, Come share it with us. Uh, follow us on Instagram and tag us so we can see what you're making or post it over on Facebook. Um, heck, even email it to us. We'd love to see what you're building. If you're looking for inspiration, follow us on all those channels and keep an eye out on blog.modernistpantry.com where we're publishing uh, frequently asked questions. We've got Ask a Chef there, uh, as well as some recipe inspiration to get you started uh, or, or to just kind of joggle something a, a little bit new. Um, and wherever you're watching this, whether you're watching this on Facebook or on On Demand on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that share button. Pass this along to some of your culinary peers so that they know the secret to perfect ice cream just like you. Um, or whatever it is. We've talked about some great stuff. If you're just tuning in for the first time, we've talked about how to get the perfect, uh, we've talked about how to get the perfect nacho cheese. Mm -hmm. We talked about how to save a lot of money and reduce waste in your kitchen with the addition of Mooglu. That's actually weirdly one of my favorite ones and that's surprising because one of our most popular ones is how to make your own bacon. All right, so at the end of this video, you're gonna see us go to the top overhead. Cole, if you wanna do that, 
outstanding. So right now you're gonna see a recommended video. Uh, be sure to click over there for that one. If you haven't subscribed yet, you're gonna to wanna to click over here for that one as well. Uh, and wherever you're watching this, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin. Have a wonderful rest of your day.